You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host, and it wouldn't be special if we didn't have Paul back <laughs> from the library. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good. Um, Paul's being coming a regular. We we have so many events at the library that we need to promote them on a right. regular basis, which is really good because the library is uh, a true community center and. People don't just come there for books and to use computers. They might go look at a history room. Mm -hmm. They might have children and use the children's room. Sure. But they also, we have nice event rooms. We have a nice big multi-purpose room. We, we have a bookstore if people want to buy books. That's the right. foundation runs that. But we're just chock full events and some of them are real soon. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to keep this show going through mid-October or to end of October anyway. First thing coming up is Saturday the 7th, correct? Saturday the 7th, yep. Tell us. Uh, the Poet versus the Rapper. It's a, um, it's really a program for Brockton High School and, and middle schools. We want the students to come in and kind of um, compete for, uh, uh, in front of a panel of judges. These, these first three dates, the, the first uh, three Saturdays in, in October are going to be the audition dates. And then the finalists are going to be uh, uh, presenting in November, early November. There's cash prizes involved for mm -hmm. first, second, and third place. And um, I think it's going to be a really fun event. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's another one of Melissa's uh, 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 events, and, and those are always fun. Okay, so we have that, which sounds good. I like it, the poet versus the rapper. Yep. That's good. Um, the other thing we've been talking about, and there was a grant that was obtained by Melissa and mm -hmm. yourself um, from Eastern Bank, right. I believe. Um, we are all Americans now. Yes. And the first person that's coming on Tuesday the 10th is Isabel Lopez. Yes. Now people in Brockton know Isabel from Brockton Interfaith Community. She was an organizer. She's with a couple of different groups, very into social justice, um, very into fighting for people's rights and causes, and especially now in this day and age in this country, mm -hmm. it's become even more important. It's always been, Brockton has always been a city of immigrants. United States has always been a nation of immigrants, yes. if you really think about it, and uh, this is a great way to kick it off. We have, uh, um, I know the mayor is going to be one of them at some point, because every time you listen to a speech from the mayor, he he has a little bit of everything in him. Mm -hmm. I, I know when he's yeah. out on the campaign trail doing that, or, and just being the mayor. So he's going to do his after the election, right. in, December, in December, you said. Yep. But we, we, they're once a month, twice a, once a month, I we're think? We're generally once a month. This month we're doing Isabel on the 10th and Joseph Polycape uh, later in the month, at the 21st, 20, something like something that. Something like that. And um, you know, the thing about these events for me is, is it, they're going to be so informative to me. I mean, I've, I've not had the honor to meet Isabel yet, but I've heard so many great things about her that I'm really looking forward to these events educating me as a, as a recent Brocktonian and, and, and as the library director. Absolutely, and, and hopefully with some of them, since they're different cultures and different mm -hmm. um, creeds, food. Food. Hope there's going to be food there. <laughs> um, music, you just had a musical program that I just did. happened at the library, and I know you're going to bring a lot of music to the library, something oh, we yeah. talked about in the yep. interview when, yep. we, when we hired you, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, um, you know, I was telling you on the phone when we were talking about doing the show today that mm -hmm. back in the day when I was little and when I was originally a library page a long mm -hmm. time ago, um, we had travelogues. People... We had slideshows and film shows, yeah. and forget about all that. That's all old and passe. <laughs> but, but now you have people, I mean, that can bring in all sorts of perspectives. Um, Brockton's always been like that, so I'm looking forward to it, too. Unfortunately, the first night, um, I'm at my school committee right. meeting, so hopefully we're going to have someone over there to tape it so we can show it. But you, you're better off being there. It, it's yeah. great to see it on TV. You can relive it on TV, right. but you've got to go. Well, the idea of, of, of being there is, is, to, is to engage in dialogues with right. people. Right. And, and, and really get into into their, the, um, the, the meat of the issue. And, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. And of course we have coming back, um, we have something called Everyone Has a Voice. Tell us about that. that, that I like that title. Everyone Has a Voice. Uh, Philip Hasaurus, who's a Brockton-based poet, uh, has set up a year's worth of events every third Saturday of every month from now until next May or June. Uh, this month is uh, Jean Denny Jacquim, and he's a poet based in Cambridge, mm -hmm. and he is a, a Haitian poet. He's uh, very, very well recognized in, in, in the po poetry community. Uh, he's coming down. I, I encourage everybody to come in and, and, and take advantage of, of, of having a world-class poet 
uh, reading, and you're also welcome to uh, read your own poetry. Everybody, the idea of everybody has a voice is that everybody gets a chance to uh, to express themselves in a, in a open and, and welcoming and non-judgmental environment. I love uh, that title because yeah. it's kind of us too. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has a voice, public access. That's right. <laughs> okay, and hopefully, we haven't organized this yet, we're hoping there's a documentary film screening someplace in there with the Cape right, Verdean Center right. over at Bridgewater. Haven't quite nailed that one down yet, but hopefully tease on we'll, that we'll, one. we'll tease that one. <laughs> but we also have Professor Gary Highlander from Stonehill coming back. Yep. Now, I was fortunate enough to be present for all three of his lectures on JFK. And they I, were great. I missed them all. <laughs> yeah, but we recorded, <laughs> recorded them all, them, so we can give right. them to you. Um, but he, now he's switched gears and he's talking about World War One. Right. Because 1917 was World War One, and we're in 2017. Exactly. So that one is Saturday, the 28th, 2:30 to 4. Yep. Up is that upstairs yeah, in the that's Driscoll? Yeah, up in, in the Driscoll Art. Gallery. So that's on the, basically go to the third floor and go to the northeast corner or right. northwest corner. So some of them are down in the big multi-purpose room. Right. Some of them are in the in 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 uh, you know, Driscoll. Driscoll, and uh, I guess the the immigration one, though we are all Americans, it said what I saw that it's in the the main atrium yes, it on is. the first floor. So that's new. We, yeah. we haven't done, we used to do murder in the library mm -hmm. there, which I hope to bring back someday. We did, um, again, you and I have been talking about it. Who knows, maybe we're gonna have weddings there someday. I hope so. Boston Public does it. Mm -hmm. Why can't Brockton Public do it? It's a beautiful building. So anything I missed or anything you wanna talk about, anything, new initiatives or new staff, new people, anybody? Um, um, new staff, we have, um, we have Tammy Campbell, who's been in the reference department for a long time. She's going to be picking up the, uh, the task of being head of children's for us. Okay. Uh, she comes to us uh, many years here, many years at the Boston Public Library System uh, as a children's librarian. So we're really looking forward to bringing her on board. And, and um, she's already making an impact down there, and she hasn't even started yet. She's starting on, on uh, Columbus Day, actually. There you go, because we, well, the day after Columbus right, Day, right? Because right, we're yeah. not open on Columbus <laughs> Day. But um, we, we have people with retirements, mm -hmm. and then we had people that were internal that we yep. moved to other, other positions. And, uh, you know, the library, we're, we're open Monday and Tuesday, 12 to 8, mm -hmm. Monday and yes. Tuesday, yep. and then 9 to 5 the other days at downtown. Downtown. Town. And I always get the branches mixed up. I They're do each too. open. They're each open 12 hours a week, but if you go to www.brocktonpubliclibrary.org, you can see the right hours. There. It's right there. Okay, yeah. Paul, thanks for coming in. Mark, thank you. Always a pleasure. Likewise. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.